Hi, um, it's Yi Ming here, and uh, I'm also known as Chengdulito A. So, as line art made into master, like several days ago, I think it's it must be a good chance for me to uh, do a video to introduce some of the functions for line art, and uh, maybe you will learn something. Okay, this is gonna be a quick video I'm not gonna cut anything I'm just gonna directly upload to YouTube so um, any of the mistakes will be included yeah let's begin Okay, um, line art has been very easy to set up. So if you have your scenes here, okay. For example, you have sub cubes, and yeah, that's gonna be your scene. You just shift A and add a line art from grease pencil. Uh, you can have three options. Uh, if you have an active object, you can add object line art, or otherwise you just make it easy as scene line art. That's gonna be the most useful one since that's one click for everything. Uh, if you have active collection here, you can also add collection line art. It's the it's for convenience. So we we just add scene line art. So you can see the re result immediately pops out. So line art is a grease pencil modifier, and this is a huge modifier with a lot of options. Uh, but with that Shift A menu, you just create all those themes uh, very simply. Uh, you do not to uh, manually click those options set up layers and materials and stuff like that so that's the basic usage of line art uh, if you have any scene and you add a line art to it it will look okay it will not look great until you adjust for the specific effect you need but it will look okay will be the thick black line over those features but if you want to do, let's say, um, mechanical stuff, you might want to show the internal structure of those objects. So to do that, you need to add a li another line art modifier and set all these uh, sources and uh, materials and set the occlusion level to one, you see? this shows the internal structure of the um, scene let's make make the this one thicker so it differs so this introduces a new problem that we have currently with line art in the master build that is we do not have a cache uh, for the data so Every single line art modifier is gonna compute the whole scene uh, to generate one result. So, uh, if you have two line art modifiers, the whole scene actually went through line art calculation twice. So uh, that's currently a limitation, but we are uh, working on some ways to solve this. Uh, as for now, if you add too many of those, you may find your scenes become noticeably slower uh, i will not recommend you to do so and i would recommend you to only use um, low poly models for line art as you don't really need that much polygons to have all those feature lines shown so there's that okay um let's set this aside and uh, Let's go over the features. So from the top, you can see you can select uh, the geometry geometry source from this drop-down menu. 
if you have let's say a sub collection oh uh sorry i, I what, what what happened okay new collection okay if you have this sub collection and you select uh, the parent collection the sub collection is going to be included however if you um, select the sub collection there only the sub will shown and the intersection lines uh, the with external uh, things will not be uh, drawn but if you have intersection lines say in this uh, source you selected it will be drawn correctly like this okay no lines are gonna show up outside your selected source so there's that let's select it back to scene okay these are the line types if you disable intersection uh, it's gonna make the whole thing a little bit faster there's the crease threshold and you see past this threshold you can get crease lines okay um, these two options are sometimes useful if you have those garbled faces uh, it will automatically remove uh, double points as that may cause some problems in occlusion detection and if you choose overlapping edges as contour this will draw the edge split thing correctly and sometimes you want to use that and sometimes you don't because this if you enable this uh, the calculation is going to be a little bit slower okay and this is instanced object so say if you have a uh, a particle system Let's make a simple particle system real quick. Render the object. Okay. You see the um, the child particle objects are also being rendered as well. Uh, you can disable that because sometimes the particle count is too high and you don't want to stress your computer so you go to grease pencil go to that modifier and turn off this instanced object option so there's that um, let's see um, what else we got the style this is pretty self-explanatory for occlusion we not only have level but also transparency uh, I just set up a demo scene that may be better explain this usage let's open that uh, so um, in line art sometimes you will face this kind of situation where you got a window for example if you are rendering a architectural thing or say a vehicle a car or an airplane you want to render stuff behind this window but not everything behind a closed wall so we only want to select this region and show the line art of this monkey how do i do that well uh, that's through the transparency settings first you need to select uh, the the window object okay you go to the material and there is going to be a line art panel here and you enable the transparency it will show you eight transparency masks and you choose any one you like doesn't really matter the, let's say I choose the zero bit and you go back to the grease pencil part go to the modifier and you see we now have the all the red line showing everything that's being occluded once or twice so if we enable the transparency here and select the mask here you see only stuff occluded by these 
this mask is shown, but it also shows the uh, contour lines of the window frame. That's might, that might be what you want, that might not be what you want. So to eliminate this, you just simply select the monkey as the source. See, let's very efficiently uh, cut out the window content for you and everything else is not affected. So if you move around, you can really see how this is uh, more convenient compared to freestyle because if you want to do a window in freestyle you need to have it rendered two times and use a composition um, sort of technique to achieve that but not with line art however you see the there are black lines and red lines that are generated using two line art modifiers that means the scene currently has been computed twice before it sends out uh, solutions to speed up this is coming but mm, it's gonna take a while okay just don't use too much too many line art modifiers in here it will be good um another thing about uh, line art is that you can have vertex weight transferred into the grease pencil one let me show you another um, demo file uh, which one is it oh this one I've been using the screenshot for a time using this file so this is a monkey and from the central one we can see uh, I I used the color code to display the weight of two vertex groups if you want to see it's uh, it should be here no uh, maybe I made it here yeah the one is called line fade one is called line another whatever it just means there are two vertex groups in here and the results are shown like this uh, which means you can use vertex groups to select regions of a mesh and use a use a single line art modifier to transfer those information to the target grease pencil strokes and use grease pencil modifiers together with the vertex weight in um, grease pencil strokes you can set different styles to different parts of your mesh uh, Let's see, how do I do that? Yes, you use the vertex weight transfer panel. And there's only one input box here. So this one box is for you to enter these beginning of the names of the vertex group you want to transfer the weight from. So if you remember, our vertex group have the name of line fade, line another. We just set line here. It will automatically select all the vertex groups that whose name begins with line. Okay. Uh, before you do anything else, you need to go to grid pencil vertex groups and set up the exact same name with uh, you want with what you want and you choose this match output option and the weight corresponding to each vertex will be automatically transferred to the group with the same name but if you want to put those into the same group it's also okay you just choose one single group as the target and all the weights coming from here will go into the same group you specified there. Uh, there is also an option that is called binary weight. As you can see, the red weight is spread across this face. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, like now, you want to use a hard selection, you just 
choose the threshold to zero or you choose whatever threshold you want. You can see the difference as I adjust those values. If you don't enable the binary weight, it's going to transfer the data as is, the smooth data. Here you can see it is smooth. If you use binary weight, it's going to uh, clip or uh, make the weights into a binary fashion. So this is about vertex weight transfer. I believe you guys can have a lot more creativity in doing so. So this is just a simple demonstration. Uh, for baking, I mean, baking is pretty self-explanatory. You just click bake and clear bake. Uh, there is a sing single thing that's in the output tab that is, it follows the frame step you specified here. So if you set, set this, for example, to 10, it will only bake once every 10 frames. So there's that, uh, you should know. Mm, otherwise, uh, I don't think there's anything left. <laughs> this is just a very simple video. And uh, if you have any questions or bug report or feature request, you can always contact me at my website or just at Chundulito A on Twitter. Uh, let's see if I have anything left out. Um, I don't think so. Uh, I've been fixing the bugs uh, quite well, I think. A lot of bugs has been addressed and uh, see improvements. So yeah, so there's that. Um, I'll see you uh, in the next video. Bye bye.